And now in the last verse of Ephesians chapter 2. And leaving on, carrying on from where we left off yesterday, uh, where we were talking about local church. And I think we need to um, upgrade our view of the local church as a result of these verses. Um, I think our tendency is to do the reverse because it seems very ordinary. It doesn't seem anything special about uh, the people we join with. Um, but after you read these, I think we'll need to revise our opinion upwards. Now, Paul has said that uh, the church is God's temple. And it's easy in that to think of him just talking about the worldwide church, the grand sort of um, structures you have uh, around the world that make up uh, the worldwide church, because you instinctively think that way, or you think of what it was in the past. But in verse 22, he says he's talking about uh, a local individual uh, fellowship. Yeah, because after all these things, he says, and in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Uh, so he's talking directly there to the local congregation in Ephesus. And uh, <clears throat> I suppose we could include ourselves that way as well. Uh, the local fellowship, you too. What it means is that God is working to build a group of people together. Uh, to shape them into uh, a body uh, where he is at the center. Now, interestingly, Peter has the same sort of image uh, when he talks about the church in uh, his first letter in chapter 2. And uh, he says this, um, You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Uh, this is process of bringing together living stones. I don't know if you've ever seen a, a dry stone wall uh, craftsman at work. Um, he, he takes uh, a rough pile of stones and makes a wall out of them. Sometimes choosing one, uh, turning it round, slotting it in, sometimes putting it, putting it aside for a while and then slotting it in later. It's an amazing process and uh, that's what's going on. Except that God is building not a wall, he's building a, a temple, uh, uh, and you are part of it. He's putting you where he wants, with those he chooses. And his aim is to make a dwelling for himself, uh, where he will live uh, by his spirit. Now once again, I think we need to check our thinking uh, in this, because uh, when we think of where does God dwell in the world, our minds will often go to holy sites around the world, those um, special places that people have created. Or maybe you'll go to some sort of natural wonder that fills you um, uh, with amazement, leaves you breathless. And you say, well, there's something godlike about those places. Well, actually, uh, there are only two places, uh, I think, in the world where God is said to dwell. One is in the heart and life of the individual believer. That's another subject for another day. The other is here in the temple that he makes of his people, the, the local church. Um, the, the, the body to which you belong. Here, here he's talking uh, not just worldwide, he's talking, as I say, to an individual congregation. If we're honest, I think as Christians, even as Christians, we're a bit surprised by that sort of verdict. This is the place where God dwells. What, my, my fellowship where people argue about the colour of the paint or uh, who's not on the tea rota when they should be. Yeah, that fellowship. That fellowship with... Uh, the oddballs, the strange people, the people, the misfits, the, the ones you don't quite understand, those you find a bit difficult to get on with. That's where God dwells. And like I said at the beginning, um, we do need to upgrade our view of the church or stop downgrading ourselves. Uh, these passages have said that the church is God's household, his family that he's created, it's his temple that he is building in the world. And now he, he comes right down to the local congregation and says, well, actually, this is a place where God dwells by his spirit. If you're a Christian, difficult as it may be, you cannot get by without the church. This is where God dwells. And actually, if you're looking for God, if you want to find him, you don't need to go to the ends of the earth. Well, you may find other churches at the ends of the earth as well, but you don't need to go that way. It was trendy when I was a student to think about going to Afghanistan and India and Pakistan, the northwest frontier. Well, you don't need to go that far. The answer, 
might be just at the end of your street, in the church that you walk past every day. Well, my timetable doesn't permit me to broadcast tomorrow morning. Uh, so uh, this series will return to on Monday when we start chapter three. In the meantime, uh, we have Sawai Live at 11 o'clock on Sunday too. So I hope to see you at one of those.